We are now live and we could start. Looks like 629, 630. Fantastic. Good evening, everyone. Uh, would like to call to order the May 14th regular meeting of the Harris County Board of Education. If you will, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, United of, America, States of America and to the republic, to the republic for which it stands, for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, we will move to item D on our agenda that the Harris County Board of Education recognize the following students and teachers for their recent outstanding achievements. Uh, Mr. Couch, I am going to ask you please to um, unmute yourself and lead this con conversation, please. Sorry about that, that's a two mouse night and I had the wrong mouse. Um, All right. I didn't see Miss Bailey. Is Miss Bailey going to join us here today? You gonna bring she is. I'm, I'm promoting her right now. <laughs> yeah, she needs it. Um, on the agenda, under the attachment, you'll notice that uh, there's several people that we're going to, several students and, and staff and faculty members that we're going to recognize tonight for uh, some outstanding achievements that occurred. Gosh, Miss Bailey, you're in the parking lot in front of the school. Um, I, I think that although this has been an unusually weird year, uh, some of the achievements that, that our staff and our students have, have accomplished is stuff they've been working on since pre-K. And uh, they're an exceptional group. I've had an opportunity to, to meet with some of them, to interview some of them, uh, and I've gotten to know some of them really well. And they're, uh, I mean, they're an exceptional group. It, it's the same kind of Harris County kids that, that we're used to. And they may be socially distanced, but when this thing calms down, I promise you, they're gonna make their mark throughout colleges, throughout uh, this community and, and, and throughout the country. And I, I really uh, appreciate what they've done and the achievements they've made. With that being said, I wanna turn it over to Ms. Bailey. You have to unmute there. There you go. I am unmuted. Good evening, Ms. Bailey. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having us all here tonight. Um, I want to start by saying that one of the best parts of my job as senior counselor is that I get to work with amazing kids like the ones we're going to have here tonight. Um, they're absolutely amazing, and they always make me smile and laugh and just give me hope for the world. Um, of course, that's also made working from home really, really that much harder because I miss my babies and I'm used to every day, second block, having this group come in my office plus then a bunch more after AP Calc and just kind of unload on me. But, you know, it is what it is. But um, I'm going to start by saying I'm not even going to try to tell you tonight all the great things that these kids do because it's just too much for a meeting like this. Um, all these kids do it all. Um, they find time to take the most difficult classes and to excel in them. They're in clubs, they do community service, they volunteer, they have jobs. They literally just do everything. Um, they're amazing. Um, I'm going to get started with the introductions. Uh, I'm going to start tonight first with um, the phenomenal Aisha Patel. Aisha, are we going to show Aisha? Aisha is our valedictorian. Is she on day? Okay. Aisha is our valedictorian. And um, you know that that means she has the highest GPA of anybody in the senior class, which is amazing because that's a little over 400 kids. Um, Aisha is a wonderful student and just a wonderful person. She works hard in the classroom. She works hard outside of school. Uh, she plans to attend the University of Georgia, and she's going to major in women's studies, and then she plans to go on to medical school to be an OBGYN. 
congratulations, Aisha. Yes, Next. congratulations, Aisha. Mm -hmm. Next, I want to introduce you to our salutatorian. And our salutatorian this year is Natalie Hutchinson. Natalie is, um, was also our page one representative in the area of general scholarship. Um, Natalie is planning to attend Georgia Tech and there she will double major in international affairs and Spanish, which that's the exact degree that my daughter has from Georgia Tech. So I'm doubly proud of Natalie. Um, she eventually hopes to go on to law school after Georgia Tech. Congratulations and thanks for coming tonight, Natalie. Congratulations, Thank Natalie. Thank you. Okay. The next student that I want to recognize is Nora Klein. Dave, did Nora make it? Is she here? I do not see a Nora Klein, but there's okay. a Lawson she Smith. I don't know if that if they have the wrong name in there. Oh, it could be because she's Nora is actually babysitting tonight, and so she said she was going to try to log in from the house where she's babysitting. So that is probably possibly it, but. Um, all right, we'll sit, we're gonna see. <laughs> okay, that's probably her, okay. Um, Nora is our star student, and that means that she had the highest SAT score in the class and is also in the top 10%. Uh, Nora is actually getting doubly recognized tonight because Nora was also our page one representative in the area of social studies where she was um, a runner up. Um, she is a true fighter for social justice and her project that she did, she did an oral history of segregation in Harris County and it has been donated to the Harris County libraries. So I would encourage all of you to go to the library and check it out once we can actually use libraries again because um, it's amazing. Um, like I said, tonight, Nora is um, babysitting for a child that um, for whom routine and scheduling is very, very important. And she's just felt like she could not cancel this on him. So I'm not sure if she's out there joining us. I think she might be. But um, anyway, Nora um, next year in the fall will attend Davidson College in, New in North Carolina. And she will major in secondary English education. And if she lands back here in Harris County, we definitely need to hire her one day because she'll be amazing. Looks like she wasn't able to join. So please pass our uh, congratulations yeah, on to her, Ms. Bailey. Yeah, she, her, um, the child she's babysitting is autistic and she just sure. said routine is very, very important to him and she just couldn't cancel. So but well, I told her I would still rave about her in her absence. So absolutely. You can't enough great things about her. Please um, tell her congratulations for us. I sure will. Uh, for her star teacher, Nora chose Mrs. Lane Tyus, my sweet friend. Uh, Mrs. Tyus teaches our AP language classes and our teacher cadet classes. But more than that, Mrs. Tyus teaches kids. Um, kids are always first in her class and she has proof that when you conduct a classroom like that, academic success just always falls into place. So, um... Ms. Tice, thank you for coming tonight and uh, congratulations on your uh, selection as star teacher. Very well deserved. Thank you. Um, the next student that I want to recognize, the next student I want to recognize is our other page one runner up, Kaylee Griswell in the area of music. And like I said before, all of these kids are who they are because they're super busy. Kaylee could not be here tonight because this is the time of her private violin lessons. So she's, you know, getting her lessons. But again, I want to, you know, talk to you about her and tell you how wonderful she is. You probably already know Kaylee because if you've been to a football game, she's one of the drum majors out there. As a matter of fact, we're recognizing both of the drum majors tonight. Um, she is uh, going to also attend Georgia Tech in the fall and there she will major in aeronautical aerospace engineering. You know, <laughs> imagine that. But uh, congratulate Kaylee. Kaylee kind of does it all. So I'm sure you guys have seen her around. Um, I'm going to move on. And since I just introduced both of the page one students, I want to also introduce the page one teacher this year. 
who happens to also be our system teacher of the year, and that's Jay Gordon. Is Jay with us, I hope? I feel like you guys probably already know Jay because I would imagine he's probably a regular fixture at these Board of Education meetings where his kids are always being recognized for doing great things. Um, he does an exceptional job with our agricultural program and the kids just love him. There are many kids who say they, that he's changed their life. Um, you all get to see all the awards and recognitions that he gets, but he does a whole lot more than that. Like Mrs. Tyus, Jay Borden loves kids. Um, I can recall this past fall, one time I was leaving the school and it was late as usual, about 545. And I'm walking out by the cafeteria and there's Jay and a group of kids playing a kickball game. And I'm just like, I don't know if you guys know this, but y'all see him all the time. But I don't know if you guys realize he lives in Auburn. Okay, he lives in Auburn and he has small children. And this, the, there he is out there just playing kickball with his kids so that they can hang out and have fun. Um, that says a lot about who he is as a teacher and who he is as a person. He's great. We're lucky to have him in, Ms. Tyus. Absolutely. Um, congratulations, Mr. Borden. Well. And, uh, congratulations, Mr. Borden. And uh, Ms. Bailey, I, let me take a minute just to, to just say to all of the uh, page one nominees, and uh, runner-ups, recipients that uh, you mentioned, uh, and they were on there. If, if anyone was able to watch the page one presentation uh, for a virtual experience, it was very well done. And I was excited right. and proud to see Harris mm -hmm. County was very well represented, so. It was, it's always great kids. All the kids are great, so. Um, the last two students that we're gonna recognize this evening are winners of the Principal's Award. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with what that is, but this award goes to students who have given their all to our school and to our community. They've sacrificed themselves to give back to the place that they love. And both of these students have great attitudes and they are outstanding role models for underclassmen. There could not be two more deserving students of this award and you would not believe the things that they have done. We would be here all night if I told you both of them. I mean, it's amazing and it's all been not because they had to, because they truly want to, because they truly love Harris County. Um, Harris County High School is a lot better place because both of these students were in attendance there. Um, the first one is Jamira Hayes. I hope Jamira's with us because she was also in a tight schedule because she's doing clinicals um, all day because she's getting her CNA license at Columbus Tech because that's who she is. Um, but this angel will attend Fort Valley State University, duh, because her mama is Melissa, um, and she will major in middle grades education there. And again, we can only hope she lands back in Harris County so we can hire her. So congratulations, Jamira. So well deserved. Absolutely. Congratulations. And she is here. I keep trying to promote her over and she's not coming. It's not letting her over for some reason. But I'm going to keep trying. Okay. Well, if you, if you can hear us, congratulations. All right. And the other winner of the Principal's Award is Jillian Munoz, or my Jilly Willie. Uh, this angel is taking a somewhat different path. Jilly is going to go straight into the Alabama National Guard. And after that, she's going to attend the University of Alabama, which we all know Mr. Couch is, I'm sure, happy to hear. And at the University of Alabama, she will major in nursing. So congratulations, Julie. Yes, congratulations, Julian. And uh, thank you for your uh, dedication to the country. And, uh, your thank you. and we did get Jamira in too. She's here. There she Yay. is. Yay, congratulations. Hey, Jamira. She told me, she said, I won't let lady. you down, Miss Bailey. <laughs> She had a busy schedule, but she said, I promise I won't let you down. I'll be there somehow. I said, it's all good. <laughs> but thank you to um, for having us and, you know, recognize all these students. And also, I really want to thank you for all the support that you give me and these students in our whole school all year. Um, I really pre appreciate it because your support helps us to succeed. So thanks, guys. Baylor, thank you so much for bringing this to us tonight. All right. Well, thank you're very you. welcome. Thank good you. to see you all. Stay you safe. as well. Mr. Couch, I think we have uh, two other uh, 
special guests that we want to recognize. Is that correct? We, we do. That. I would like to add a, a kind of a postscript to what we just saw. You know, I've known Tammy Bailey for uh, longer than she cares to admit, and, and she's been fortunate to work Maybe in this system. Maybe as a child. Kind of been, <laughs> yeah, I think you started yeah. teaching me at 12, right? That's but, right, that's right. But the, the, I mean, this is an unfortunate time for us all. I mean, the, war, the world's shocked. But, you know, these kids, they're resilient. They keep right on going. And, and th this particular group that we've seen tonight, they're as good or better than any we've ever put out. And uh, it just keeps happening in this county. And we all realize, and I know uh, Tammy sh shares the same uh, opinion as I do, we're just really lucky to be here. And we're lucky to have these kind of kids in our system. And, and I really appreciate it. Uh, Lane Tice and Jay Borden, um, we have some fantastic teachers. They're two of the best. And uh, so several of you have had opportunities to work with them. Uh, and, and your children have worked with them and you know what, what kinds of uh, effort they brought to their programs and it's just fantastic and again when we have these opportunities even if it is some kind of virtual big screen thing it, it, it's a wonderful thing that they have an opportunity for us to recognize them because they are so deserving and I appreciate it. Yeah. With that being said um, we have a couple of other people I'd, I'd like for us to recognize and one of those is uh, Ms. Shalia Baker. I'll turn it over to her. She's going to uh, uh, introduce a couple of people that have received special recognition across the state, uh, a really select group and a really nice award. Ms. Baker. All right, good evening. Good evening. Um, I have the honor of introducing two phenomenal people that were nominated for awards that they didn't even know they were nominated for. And the first one <laughs> is Mrs. Michelle Johannes who is our Harris County School District ESOL teacher. And if you know Mrs. Johannes, you know she has a wonderful personality and I don't know how she does it, but she travels throughout the whole district almost every day to serve all of our students in our um, ESOL population. When Mrs. Johannes was nominated as the Harris County Exemplary ESOL Teacher of the Year, and on May 1st, we received recognition that the Georgia Department of Education has selected Mrs. Johannes out of 2,410 teachers across the state and 42 school systems. There were only 35 to receive this honor and our recipient of course is Mrs. Michelle Johannes. So she mm -hmm. is one of the Georgia Department of Education's spring 2020 exemplary ESL teachers. So congratulations to Mrs. Johannes. Yes, congratulations. Very well deserved Mrs. Johannes. Yes. And um, as I said, they did not know they were being nominated. So the next person was nominated by Mrs. Johannes. And this person is a student at Harris County High School. She's a graduating senior. When she first entered the United States, she spoke very, very little English. And she came here, I think, when she was in the fifth grade. And since she's been in our system, she has worked very hard, maintained academic standing as an honor roll student. She's been very actively involved in ROTC and other areas. She's a leader. And I understand that she's at work now, so she may not make it with us tonight because she's been working because of her strong work ethic. But um, this is Melissa Stokes Martinez. And Melissa Stokes Martinez was nominated as the Harris County School District Exemplary EL Learner. And we are proud to say that out of 3,185 high school seniors across the state of Georgia, Melissa was selected as 33 of those students to be the EL Exemplary Learner 2020-20 for the Georgia Department of Education. So congratulations what? to Melissa Stokes Martinez. Yes, what an honor. That's that's fantastic. And uh, because, congratulations to both of you ladies. And because of school closures, we receive awards from State Superintendent Richard Woods and Mrs. Johannes will receive virtual awards recognition in October at the annual conference. So congratulations. Yes, congratulations. What an honor. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to do what I do, and it's only with the support of the teachers, administrators, and the superintendents and assistant superintendents that I can help these students shine and do my job as best that I can. So thank you all. I, I would like to throw in that I, I have an opportunity to see Michelle from time to time. <laughs> She has unbelievable energy. I don't know if y'all know that. But I've also had um, a, a chance to speak with a mom 
uh, who is, um, she's an immigrant, she's Hispanic, and, and she was a little unsure about her elementary child participating in the program. It, she was just a little, you know, she wasn't sure, but boy, once she got to know Michelle, I've never heard another thing. She thinks it's wonderful and it's been really good for him. He, he, he's an exceptional person. But Ms. Johannes does that across our system and, and it's really fantastic that she's been recognized and we really appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Johannes. Fantastic. One other thing. Uh, you're gonna be seeing some of this stuff on television um, probably next month, early part of the month. But uh, Donna Patterson called me and, and wanted to be absolutely sure, and I do what Donna says most of the time, to recognize that Shalia Baker is the hometown hero and uh, for the work with the distribution of the nutritional system. Uh, Ms. Patterson nominated her and she was clearly the best candidate. And uh, they went down and did an interview and a tape and they gave her $500. So congratulations, Ms. Baker. It was very well deserved, and I can't wait to see your video on WTVM. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thanks for all the effort and the work that you and your team did and have done, continue Thanks to do. Thanks for all your support because we couldn't have done any of this without the support of a strong board, strong superintendent, and a strong Harris County community because the community has made this what it is. So thank you. Congratulations. Yes, and I, I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll say I, my only regret uh, uh, of this event tonight is not being able to tell all of these um, very special uh, guests uh, congratulations in person. Now, if we were in person, I probably wouldn't be able to shake your hand still, but at least I could see you face to face and congratulate you. And so uh, this will have to do. But uh, we do say congratulations and thank you for taking time out to come be with us tonight so that we can tell you that. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so then that will bring us to the next item on our agenda. And that is item E, that the Harris County Board of Education review and approve uh, the attached meeting minutes from the board meetings held in April 2020. Uh, these were included in your package last week. I trust you uh, had the opportunity to review those. Um, let me correct my view so I can see you. Apologize. I trust you had a chance to review those. I will entertain a motion at this time uh, that we accept the uh, April meeting minutes. So I'll moved, you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Goodnow, second by Mr. Ray. All those in favor respond by saying yay. 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 Any yay. opposed? Yay. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. That will bring us then to item F1, that the Harris County Board of Education discuss the attached proposed FY21-22 board meeting uh, calendar. Uh, Mr. Couch, would you like to speak to this? I know uh, Ms. Sawyer has done a, uh, a lot of work on preparing this for us. Uh, th these are meetings for next year, which will, which will begin uh, in July. Um, so, Mr. Couch, I don't know if you or Ms. Sawyer would want to speak to that, but... Um, any comments on that? I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, sorry, it took me a minute to get on mute. Um, there's a couple of attachments on here. One, and, and I want you to understand or look over the board meeting uh, agenda for next year and, and look at some things. We've tried to shift some things around to fit what we think is, is uh, what you've done in the past. Some of the meetings are not all on Thursday. But go ahead and check those and check your calendar to see how those are. Also, we added an additional uh, memo there's an attachment on there which has a, an outline of the uh, proposed budget meetings that we have coming up and some of those will work with these board meetings um, um, for example when we present to you, uh, the draft of the final board meeting you know we give that to you and then a week later uh, you consider it for adoption that kind of thing and that's going to come i believe it's uh well, I know it's in July, I believe it's July 2nd, and then again, we do something on July 9th. But I'd, I'd like for you to look over those dates, look over that information and see. And then if, if we need to do something different, we can change it in June. Uh, the reason, obviously, that we're going with the budget um, proposed changes is based on June 11th being when uh, the legislature is supposed to get together and, and try to hammer out 
a, a budget for next year. And then shortly thereafter, we're hoping at the end of June, we'll be able to combine what we've already done in the meetings we've already had with what they actually give us in our allotment. And then we'll see where we are and we'll have the first week of July to put that in place. Um, I mean, we'll talk some more about the action agenda that's coming up with that, with that spending resolution, but that helped. That kind of fits in with this, as you're aware. Um, one of the things I do want you to know is, is as you look over those, uh, we have a couple of called meetings, which is something you all have expressed your interest in doing, which we've done in the past, only now we'll probably do virtually, where we'll meet with the principals, they'll discuss what's on their budget. We'll do an elementary group, then we'll do Creekside Middle School and then the high school. Uh, it'll start at five. I'd like for you to check your times and see if you want to do that. And then we'll have another meeting uh, where the assistant superintendents will come in starting at five and we'll go over what their programs are. And during those times, we're going to look at where we are and where we think we're going to be and have you uh, aware of all the things that are involved with that, where when we get back to uh, working over proposed budgets, you'll understand where we are and you'll, we may have to have another call meeting in order to adjust things right there in July. I don't want there to be any surprises for you or for me, but uh, we're going to get them anyway because we don't know what we're going to get till the end of June. We have a pretty good idea. We've all been told, and I think most everyone's aware, that there's a 14% coming or anticipated from the state. And then uh, uh, we'll have to make some adjustments on our end too. But some of that range will vary based on some of the things that we were able to do a better job with this year. We hope. Any questions about either one of the uh, proposed uh, calendars and timelines. If you do have any, let me know that this, you don't take official action on the timeline, but if there are problems or if something comes up, let me know and we'll look at making adjustments or, or alternative ways for you to get the information. Okay. Mr. Cowell. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Scott. So I was just going to say, I already know the July 2nd meeting, that is the week that we are on vacation, and I will be at the time. I already do that for a fact. Now, I can I can dial in if I need to, but I know I'm not going to be in town whatsoever. So that's just a heads up, FYI, for everybody involved. Well, you, you and I, Mr. Lip, we can talk about it and see, since it's more of an informational kind of thing, it's not required there's a quorum, but uh, I would want you to know what's going on. And, and give you the information. This is one of those things that we can always take and you can watch it when it's convenient for you. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. But we can look at alternatives and if we need to change that date, we can. I'm glad okay. you're on vacation, to be honest with you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, 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 let's put it, let's put it this way. I'm hoping we'll be on vacation. That's right. Um, I, think, I think so. Any other questions uh, from the rest of the board members at this point? Mr. Couch, I do have a couple of questions or a statement and a, a question. So um, the next year meeting calendar, I encourage everyone to take a look. Please take a look at that and make sure, uh, I think Ms. Sawyer is taking into account the GSBA conferences. Um, we wanna look at next year's school calendar and make sure that you know it coincides appropriately. And she's done a lot of work on that already, uh, but just, just pay attention to that. And um, when we come back in June, we'll need to, um, to either make uh, edits uh, at the committee meeting so that we can um, uh, resolve that at the, at the regular meeting uh, as we have no meetings currently scheduled in, in uh, July. So we'll need to do that uh, in June. Uh, Mr. Kyle, my question is, and I think you answered it, but I, I wanna make sure. So, uh, and this may be a question also for Mr. Ellington, because we include our budget meetings uh, on our approved calendar meetings uh, at the beginning of the year, right? And we're only allowed to change a certain number of, of meetings. And because we designated those budget meetings with the time that we're in, is there any official action or legal action that we need to take to remove the budget meetings from, that's been approved for the current calendar and move them to this new approved budget meeting sessions um, in the month of June um, or in July? I'm gonna leave that up to you, Mr. Ellington. Go ahead. <laughs> sure. I, I think that that would be a good idea, Mr. Lip, to to take board action to to move those calendar events if they were voted on and approved before. 
then you should probably also take action to to move them. Okay. If I understood the the background and the history that you just described, if they were if they were set dates by a previous board vote, then uh, it would be a good idea to to take another vote to move it. I, although I will say, and I think um, Mr. Couch probably has has heard enough from state officials at this point to give him some reassurance about this too. I think with all of the the leeway and waivers that are that are being uh, granted from on high, I, I don't think you're going to get in trouble for a technicality like that. But sure. But I think it's a valid point, and and there's no reason not to do that. Of course, uh, Mr. Lip. Uh, Sir. Other than the board meeting we have tonight where we're recommending the spending resolution be approved, the next meeting we have on the schedule is June 4th, which would follow two days after the June 2nd board meeting. So you could approve it at that time if, that, if that's what you so choose to do. If you want some more time to look over it and look at the other calendars too. Okay, so I, yeah, uh, that, that would be good. So our, our June 2nd meeting uh, would fall before the new budget meetings per se, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. And, but do, uh, and I, I apologize. I don't, I don't have my meetings here in front of me, but um, we have other budget meetings that have been approved previously voted on throughout the month of May. So what we probably, uh, what we may want to consider uh, is voting to tonight to remove the budget meetings previously established in May with uh, the understanding that we, when we come back in June the 2nd, we will establish a new budget calendar. And that'll give us all time to go back and look at our calendars, look at our dates and make sure that we are approved appropriately. Uh, so we can take them, the ones that have already been uh, voted on off the calendar tonight. And then June the 2nd, approve a new budget meeting calendar is is that uh appropriate mr ellington or is that uh, too much what do i need to do i think that that would be fine i think if as long as as mr couch can handle the mechanics of, of doing that and it makes sense from his standpoint in terms of what he's going to have to do in june uh it sounded like a good idea to me mr. Yeah, that, that's the rest uh, of the board members Shane, we, Mr. Lip, we actually, we base this one for all your information. We base the new proposed one on the same process as far as the steps and the meetings. We just okay. rearrange and change the times. We're actually running about a month behind on the original thing that, that and that was a question in my mind. I'm not sure if we had approved it or if Kelly just submitted it, but that timeline that we were looking at, the final board, uh, proposal was to be set in place and approved by June 2, which obviously we can't do effectively since the legislature is not meeting until June 11. Okay. So in, uh, so in, in yeah, essence... If you, would, if you uh, would just dissolve that and cancel them, it'd be perfect. Well, uh, so I'll ask the rest of the board members if you have uh, an opinion. Are you interested in that format or have you had a chance to review the calendar? I'm looking at it now. Um, other than, you know, I think Mr. Green had a conflict with July 2nd, but I mean, we could do one of two things. We could do that. We could remove the, 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 the set meetings now, but again, June the 2nd, or uh, you can take action on the entire thing uh, tonight, remove the calendar and replace them with the uh, proposed meeting Mr. Couch has set up. What, what's your, um, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chair, I, I would be in favor of of the recommendation of the superintendent in moving the meetings that were scheduled for May to the June schedule that, uh, that he's proposed. I, I, I would have no problem with that. I would agree with that also. Yeah, that sounds great to me. Okay, so, okay. So then uh, I will entertain a motion then that uh, at this Oh, sure. Let me add one thing. Mr. Green, just, just for your information, and be sure that you know what we're talking about. The July 2, I'm hoping that we will have everything finished. And that particular meeting, we give you the budget as we propose it after we've had all your input. 
that's just a matter of here you go and you got a week to look at it. So we can send that to you through the email and you'll get the same thing everybody else did. There's no action that night. That that yeah no 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 that's absolutely fine. I just want y'all to be aware that I will I will I will be out of pocket less. I need to I need to dial into. Uh, I don't mind time to do that, but I, I did want to let you know that I just want everybody to be aware. So I'm fine I'm fine with moving forward. If everybody's you. in agreement to go move forward with it. Okay. Okay, well, then, with that said, and I appreciate that. So, with that said, then I guess I will entertain a motion at this time that we um, we um, cancel the previously set budget meetings uh, that were previously voted upon and replace them with the revised budget meeting calendar Mr. Couch has proposed tonight. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. You've already got a. Mr. Ray, thank thing. You. I thought you already had a motion on the table already, Shane. Uh, I apologize. I, uh, so I'll have second. a second. Thank you for that. Any uh, discussion? Any further discussion, I should say? All those in favor, respond by acknowledging the gay. Yay. 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 Any opposed with no? Motion carries. Thank you for that. That will bring us to item F2, that the Harris County Board of Education listened to a technology update from Dr. Finney, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services and Technology. Good evening, Dr. Finney. Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. Um, it's good to see everyone. I wanted to uh, tell you tonight about um, some things that we're considering with regard to technology with the recent pandemic and lockdown. Of course, we were thrust into the world of uh, distance learning full time and full speed ahead. And what we've learned um, through that, we've learned a lot of things about distance learning, instruction delivery, um, and the teachers have done a great uh, job and the students have done a great job and the parents have done a great job. And uh, we've learned some things. Um, number one, that uh, we definitely need more devices. Um, I've heard from a lot of parents um, that have several kids at home that it would be a lot easier to facilitate their distance learning if they, you know, they've got one computer and four kids. And so how do they, how do they do that? The other thing which is um, somewhat out of our control is there's large areas in Harris County that don't have uh, broad broadband internet service. Um, so we've learned a lot about our technology infrastructure and we're kind of in a position right now um, that's very fortunate in the midst of all of that. And that's with our uh, SPLOST funding. As we started looking at how, how we could get more uh, devices in the hands of our children, um, uh, you know, the governor asked how many we would need. And so we started compiling those lists and really we would need 2,500 Chromebooks. And so we started talking about, well, how could we, possibly do that. So we started looking at the numbers um, and we think we can do that with um, the SPLOST funds that we have, the eSPLOST funds that we have on SPLOST 5. Currently we have one point, as of um, the end of April, we have $1.6 million on hand in the SPLOST fund. And then through the summer projects that we compile with the principals and across the district, you know, that include the carpet and the painting and uh, some, you've heard me say some kitchen equipment and all of those things we normally do. Uh, we came up with a list of projects that total about $1.1 million. That includes, that $1.1 million includes the Harris County High School gym air conditioner renovation. It also includes our uh, Bank of America payment that we're gonna have to make on um, September 20th. Um, that $1.1 million also includes what we would need to buy 2,500 Chromebooks at a price, a total price of $493,000, um, <clears> which would give us those 20, uh, 2,500 Chromebooks. It would give us the charging capabilities that we need. It would give us the um, management services and all of the licenses and everything. And um, <clears throat> so we looked at this as an opportunity to put a device in every child's hand. And um, if we did that, we could be a one-to-one -one, um, school district. And that would give us 
um, about 5,900 um, devices that we could issue. Um, now we're going with that number because we also have um, a, a good deal of those devices that we currently have that will be going out of date uh, for our standardized testing over the next year and two and three years. So that would put us in good shape for um, several years if we got those um, if we got those Chromebooks. Um, <clears throat> so that's really what we're recommending uh, and considering is to purchase those um, 2,500 Chromebooks that we will have the flexibility. If we open school full time, we would have the flexibility to use those in the classrooms. We would have the flexibility to issue those and the students go home. If we had some type of hybrid model, we could still use those very flexibly. And if we had to, I hope not, but if we had to close down completely like we did last time, we would still have the capabilities to learn at a high level at home for every student that has broadband internet access. <clears throat> now, for those that don't have broadband internet access, that would still be a concern, but um, we could look at additional things like hotspots and things like that as we build forward. But we feel like this would be a big step forward in our te technology infrastructure, given this time and this situation to really help the kids and the teachers facilitate learning in whatever situation we find ourselves. I am subject to anybody's questions. Dr. Finney. I'm sorry, go ahead, Dr. Sparks. I had a question about the out-of-date Chromebooks. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, ma'am. Hello? Yes. So when you say they're out of date, are they not usable for anything? I mean, like lower level, can they be refurbished or put on our <clears throat> little mobile unit? Or are they just kaput? They would, they, would, they would still be usable for a, a period of time. But the big thing, the big thing that they would not be usable for when they go out of date is to link up with our DRC standardized testing um, system. Um, they would not link up with that once, once they went out of the day. But that capability, there would be capability to use them for a period of time, but even that would diminish as they don't accept the updates um, that come frequently. Got you. Um, the, the next question, I know that you guys sent us something about the broadband service in our area. I'm not tech savvy, but yes, ma'am. If you don't have broadband, with a hot, the hot spots don't even work. You can't even have one of those. If you don't have broadband internet service, but you have a cell phone signal, the hot spot takes the cell phone mm -hmm. signal and translates it into a Wi-Fi signal to communicate with the device. Um, we have, we have about. 30 of those out to teachers right now that were in parts of the county that didn't have uh, broadband internet service. And they're working, all 30 of those are working very well, except for a couple. And they just had a poor uh, cell signal. Uh, we just got 20 more of those in, those hotspots, and we're cataloging those and getting ready to get those out to teachers as well. But they, we've had good success with those. Thank you. Another, another mean, uh, as a last resort is, is even if they did not have a broadband uh, internet connection or were not able, able to access the internet through a hotspot, instead of a printed learning packet, we're looking at ways that we can upload um, learning packets either onto thumb drive or some other digital means. We could upload those in mass and hand those out to students. So in that case, every student would still be able to use that device. Mr. Ray, did you have something? Dr. Finney. I, I did. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Ray or Mr. Green? Mr. Ray. Go ahead, Mr. Go ahead, Green. Go <laughs> okay. So, can you hear me, Dr. Uh, so, I was just yes, going to ask. So, my question yeah, go was. Ahead. Go ahead. So my, my question is, Mr. Ray, with, speak. with this money that we're talking about spending. I can hear you, Mr. Ray. 
with this money we're talking about spending, uh, please confirm that SPLOS, how SPLOS dollars have to be spent and what they can be spent on and what they cannot be spent on, if you would, please. Yes, the SPLOS dollars have to be spent on what the voters approved in the, refer the SPLOS 5 referendum, which includes capital outlay projects such as construction, uh, building renovations, maintenance upgrades such as air conditioning, kitchen equipment, um, technology, buses, um, those type of capital expenditures. Um, East Bloss money cannot be used for salaries um, and those types of things. So we have to use this money on those capital type projects, which this would include technology. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. I just... Yes, sir. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Taylor. Uh, I, I have been on the uh, uh, Troop County uh, Zoom uh, meeting for the past uh, hour and 45 minutes, and I just got off, and I clicked on here, and I just wanted to see that Mr. Ellington was here, and uh, and I am going to click off and, uh, and, and move on to some uh, something else, but I... Uh, if y'all need me, call me. But Mr. Ellington, uh, Greg can take care of everything very, very well. So I, I will uh, leave you, uh, Greg, leave it to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Enjoy your evening. All right. Thank you. Mr. Green, did you have a question? I did. So I just wanted to, I wanted to ask a question. Again, I want to show my lack of lack of knowledge when it comes to broadband and that kind of stuff because this is the kind of stuff I notice at, at my house personally like the later in the evening or when everybody starts getting home from work and they start getting on their devices and that kind of stuff everything slows down so I mean I know we're working on trying to get our broadband width to where we can have access but is there a way to I guess enhance that width to where I mean and, I, and I'm not saying for me personally I'm just saying I know you go run into some of these things and some of the rural areas with people who are on, um, maybe they use um, like live stream for TV and that kind of stuff. So when people start getting home in the evenings, the, the, it's going to start slowing the broadband down, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that way to me, but I don't have any, um, I don't have any official data. Um, to back that up, but it does seem like that to me, even over here where I'm at, we've got pretty fairly reliable internet. Um, but I don't have any official data to back that up. We have been in talks with um, Charter Spectrum, who's our internet service provider, um, to see what they can do to help get more broadband access to people throughout Harris County. So there's two issues that they deal with basically is there may be somebody in their service area that is not a current subscriber. They've got programs where they can, at a reduced price through this emergency, get those people a get those people serviced at a reduced price. The other main thing, uh, the, the main problem is, is where there's large areas in some of the very rural areas, um, and it costs a lot for that company to build that fiber network out to them. So they would need they would need a certain number of subscribers to build that line out to those people. So what we've done is we're working with them to map um, the locations uh, to see where they might be able to get either uh, subscribers that are already in a service area or where they might possibly be able to build out. But other than working with them on that, we have very little um, influence on how to get them to build those um, fiber infrastructures out that far. Um, that's that's going to be a, a public works project, um, I, I would assume. Dr. Finney. Yes. Um, isn't there um, a bill out there, the Georgia Rural Broadband Bill, that would actually allow um, your electric providers to provide some type of bandwidth in rural areas where where does that stand at I, i'm not sure exactly where they stand with that i know they're in discussions with that but to my knowledge nothing is in place yet but i will certainly look more into that and see if i can get you a better idea of 
when that might come online. Well, I appreciate you going one-on-one -on -one, because I know in the past we've talked about um, this, trying to reach that, and that's been one of our goals in the past. I know we're looks like we're going to have to uh, get there sooner than later, but um, I'm glad to hear that we're working in that direction. Yeah, I would agree, Mr. Goodno. It has been a, a plan of ours for a while. You, uh, um, you know, we've been working on uh, progression uh, to this. Uh, you're exactly right, Mr. Goodno. I think this uh, current situation has, um, has expedited uh, that, that process a little bit um, and the need for that. Uh, but, but again, the, the district's goal was to be one-to-one -one, uh, and we were working on a project in order to do that so that we could, uh, for lack of a better term, rotate them out as, you know, on a consistent basis when they become obsolete. But it sounds like, uh, Dr. Finney, this 2,500 would put us in a place to where we could be one-to-one -one, and we could also be in a good place of starting that rotation. Does that, I'm assuming this takes into account uh, potential lost or stolen. This 20, because if we spend half a million dollars, uh, you know, I, I, I want to be sure that we are setting this program up for success for the long term, not, not a temporary fix. Yes, this would be an outright purchase. This would not be one of the installment plans that we've had in the past. And as a matter of fact, if you remember the first installment plan we did, we'll pay that off this year along with purchasing these. Um, so any of the, the small number of Chromebooks that we would need moving forward to replace, repair, um, stuff like that, we'd be in much better shape to purchase those um, as we go along in a, in a managed, um, sequenced plan to replace those devices that you know, are either broken and unusable or that they can't be um, updated. Um, the IT uh, instructional technology and Jonathan Smith, his team, uh, you know, have already leaned forward and have been leaning forward as this has been one of our goals to look at insurance plans um, and insurance possibilities that we would be able to offer that would help um, manage the cost of any kind of repairs or um, loss that we might have with this. And um, we're also looking at um, user agreements that parents and students would have to agree to. And so um, there's, there's a lot of steps that goes into it. Um, the other thing is managing in a database, the accountability and assignment of all of these devices. Um, and we're looking at that through our destiny uh, program right now. And so th there's a few things to plan for and uh, you know, we want to make sure that we get this kicked off right. Dr. Finney. Yes, sir. Um, Troop County actually does one-to-one, -one and they've had that program set up. So I don't know who your equal might be in troop in the troop system, but it might, you know, look into that and see how they managed. We are, uh, I, I will certainly make note of that. We are reaching out to other school systems um, to, you know, see how they've implemented this as far as user agreements, accountability, um, insurance programs. Um, there's a whole array of uh, choices out there and we'll need to just gather more information, gather more data and um, determine those systems that are going to work best for us. Uh, can I ask a couple of other questions real quick? Sure. Um, so you, you briefly mentioned, I think, um, because you called the name of a, a process, but will you explain to me a little better about the distribution the logistics of, of, you know, distributing, you know, that many Chromebooks out one-to-one, -one, uh, obviously that's a logistical opportunity. So what's well, the plan be, for that and monitoring there's, who there's has them be, and where are they? And... Yes, sir. There's going to be two parts to that. There's going to be, um, well, three parts, actually. We're going to have to make sure that we have the database system in which we can upload these devices. We're going to have to upload the current devices that we have. We're going to have to upload and include the new devices that we get. We're going to have to barcode. We're going to have to barcode all of them uh, to upload them into this uh, database. Those data, uh, those barcodes will be tamper-proof barcodes that go on there, so somebody can't take one off one device and put it on another device. Um, it, it won't allow you to do that. Um, then we're going to, 
and, and we're still in the initial phases of this, of we're going to have to assign those uh, to schools to be issued at the school. Now, there's different ways of doing this. You can assign these to a student for a year where they check it out at the beginning of the year and they turn it in back at the end of the year. Or there are school systems that issue them a Chromebook when they get to kindergarten in elementary school and they turn it in when they leave elementary school. Of course, we would continue every year to have them turned in for um, updates, repairs, um, maintenance, those types of things. But that child could keep the same Chromebook the entire time they were at elementary school or middle school or high school. So there are several different ways to do it. So we're, we're in the initial phases of kind of deciding how we're going to do that. All right. Um, and with the current technology staff that we have, and they do a phenomenal job, with the addition of these Chromebooks, is it significant enough where it would impact um, uh, the, the amount of work. I mean, we have the, the appropriate amount of team members in that uh, staff to, to accommodate this. For the maintenance that would of the, have to of the be books, a, keep them upgraded. And that would have to be a budget decision. That would have to be a budget decision that we consider um, as we do this. Yes. I, I, would, I would agree. Um, all right, so um, then you have other Chromebooks that are dated that need replacing now, and they're going to continue to need replacing. What, what happens to those? I mean, is there a market for those somewhere? Can we sell them, get money? Is there a donation program? What, what, I mean, what do you do with uh, a used dead Chromebook? There are some companies that take them back um, and try to refurbish them or refurbish usable parts. Um, donations, those kind of things. There's a, there's quite a few options out there uh, for those Chromebooks that are no longer usable by us. Um, I can get some of those. I can get that information of some of those options for you. Well, that's fine. I, I was just curious. I mean, obviously, you know, they're they're we're going to have a a, a cycle, and I just wonder what what you do with those. The other question I had is you mentioned. Uh, the East Plus, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the SPLOS numbers, um, where we are currently and the amount of money it would take to do that. In, in purchasing these Chromebooks, which uh, I agree with you, I think it's a, it's a valuable idea. It's something that we have had on our uh, goal and we've been working towards. What does that do with the other projects on the SPLOS list? I know you mentioned a few that would still be included in, in such as the high school, uh, the air conditioning, that's significant. Um, obviously, if you're going to take $493,000 $493, out for Chromebooks, there's something that's not going to get done. What are some of what are some of the replacements? What are we what are we moving out of the SPLOS in order to make this happen? Well, um, nothing nothing has really been moved out of the SPLOS, but we would just have to take a look at those projects. Uh, for instance, some of the painting okay. some of the painting and some of those types of maintenance uh, expenditures, we're looking at um, possibly taking them out of SPLOST and letting the ABM maintenance teams do that. Uh, for example, with some of the kitchen equipment, instead of, um, instead of going with a company where you contract getting kitchen equipment and installing it, some of the kitchen equipment we could probably get at a cheaper uh, the whole installation we could get cheaper by purchasing the equipment and where appropriate, where it's just a matter of wiring it up to uh, the appropriate um, electrical connection, our maintenance, our maintenance guys could install those and then have them inspected by that company. That would save some money on some SPLOST as well. Um, so as we go through this process, okay. we're just going to have so, to look so at you're not... um, what's available, what's on the table. And... Of course. Yes. Yeah, of course. But, but still, I just want to make sure that, that because it's a significant product. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, and I appreciate that. that's what I want to clarify. The significant issues for for maintenance and upgrade they they are going to continue. This is not going to impact that. It's going to be some of the things that yes. that maybe we can um, find an alternative <clears throat> for to to adjust the budget. Okay. Yes, and I think in order if the, if the SPLOS revenues hold, 
at what the what the what the current rates are, which we were very happy with uh, March and April on yes. the uh, boss revenues. They held pretty steady. Um, you know, we would project a we would project over from now until the end of the year um, accruing another hopefully one point six million dollars in there. So if there was something that had to be taken out in the summer, there's a possibility we could include it later on. So I interpreted, I think what I heard you say is even after Corona, shop local. Everyone needs to shop local in Harris yes, County. Sir. Yes, for sir. For those businesses, absolutely. Yeah. And I have one more question, uh, Dr. Feeney. Uh, thank you for your patience. Um, in order to make this happen, for the Chromebooks to be delivered, for your team and Jonathan's team to get them up uh, to speed in order to be ready for distribution uh, in August, what timeline are we looking at? When do we mean to make this decision? How long will it take? What, 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 what is your expectation here? Um, within a week, within a, we need to order them within about a week um, to hopefully, hopefully ensure. The company says if, if we order them fairly quickly, we should be able to get them um, in time to receive them, catalog them, process them, and get them in to the system where we can't issue them when school starts. Um, we've been planning for this in case it was in the budget. So we're ready to go. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments from uh, board members? Well, you, okay. Well, you have, you've heard the presentation. Um, we're not obligated to, to take any action tonight. Of course, um, you know, the longer we wait, the longer we're going to delay uh, the potential. Um, well, and that's okay if we if if you choose not to do that. Um, you, know, you want to you know not do the Chromebooks? That's perfectly fine. I just want to hear uh, some feedback. What's your pleasure, Mr. Chair? I, I think we need to act on this um, because we're not the only school system in the United States or in the world that's going to be possibly facing some kind of change in the, in the near future or, or, you know, everything may go back to normal, but we may have another phase of this or, or some kind of hybrid of in school, out school learning. So uh, I would be in favor of, of going ahead and, and getting this purchase done because it will aid uh, our students. And, and that's what we're here for. So is that an opinion or is that an official motion, Mr. Ray? If you need me to make it a motion, I will definitely make it a motion, sir. So, uh, so uh, there's a motion second. Uh, there is a motion and a second on the table to spend the money that is lost uh, to purchase the 2,500 Chromebooks, um, as Mr. as Dr. Finney has presented. Any further discussion? Mr. Couch had something to say. No, I'm just going to add. I mean, y'all have all been part of it. Um, thank you, Ms. Oliver. We planned this over a three-year period. This is part of the three-year plan. We've all talked about it in the past. We're going to try to be one-to-one -one in three years. Now yeah. we're just going to do it in two. Um, yeah. And because of the current circumstances, we need to go ahead and do that. Plus, the other side of it, we've been, as a board and as administrators, we've been um, not so much frugal, but we've managed and been efficient with the SPOS monies coming in and what we've spent. Uh, there are some major projects that we're going to rearrange. We're going to buy, we would like to buy these. That's a recommendation. I don't want you to be surprised. We need to go ahead and do it now. If we don't need to wait for July. Um, and and we, if y'all were to approve it, we can go ahead and take action on it with the understanding that redoing the air conditioning at the high school we can do that a year from now when we'll have access to other monies, capital outlay monies, those kinds of things. It just, it seems to really make sense. Plus one last thing, and, and I'm, I know y'all are kind of aware of it, but the way we're looking at it, we're making some efforts in teacher training and use of the classroom, trying to do some things this summer where everybody will, those that aren't uh, particularly good at or don't have skills that lend themselves to real good uh, virtual teaching, they're going to upgrade that. All our teachers will be part of that. And we're really just modernizing our school system. A lot of systems already do this. And, and you know, this is just kind of a giant leap for us to catch up. That's all we're really proposing. 
I would agree with uh, that. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Goodnight. Um, one thing, too, I know Dr. Sparks and myself, when we had originally talked about this a couple of years back, the I think if I recall correctly, the estimated cost was something like $2.2 million. And I know that over the last several years, we implemented, you know, uh, different um, units and stuff at the schools to, to get to one-to-one. -to -one. But, you know, I concur with everyone else that where we're at in this time of COVID-19, that if that's the direction that will up us one and get us where we need to go, then I'm, I'm all for it. I appreciate that. So I'll have a motion on the table and a second that we take action tonight. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please respond by yay. 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 Any opposed? Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. I was about to move on. Any opposed uh, respond with nay. Motion carries. That will move us then to item G1. Thank you. Yes, sir. That will then move us to item G1, that the Harris County Board of Education review and approve the attached computer science grant as presented. Uh, this was included in your package last week. I trust you had a chance to review that. I'll entertain a motion at this time that we approve that. So moved. Mr. Ray, do I have a second? Mr. Goodnow, all those in favor respond by saying yay. 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 Dr. Sparks, Miss Oliver, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yay. Miss Oliver. Oh. Yes. Yes. Can you not Thank hear me? You. you were on mute there for a minute. I That's am. All right. You're not now. Any opposed, uh, nay? Motion carries. That brings us to item G2, that the Harris County Board of Education review and approve the attached spending resolution as presented. This too was included in your package last week. This is the spending resolution uh, to adapt uh, and allow uh, Mr. Couch and his team to spend one twelfth of uh, the next fiscal budget um, to get the uh, supplies necessary for school to start. Uh, as we continue with the budget process. Uh, I trust you've had a chance to review that. I will entertain a motion at this time that we approve that spending resolution. So moved. I make the motion. Mr. Green, second by Dr. Sparks. Any discussion? All those in favor, respond by saying yay. 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 Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. That brings us then to item G3, that the Harris County Board of Education review and approve the attached list of FY 2020 ESY personnel as presented. Uh, this too was included in our package last week. I trust you had a chance to review that. I will entertain a motion at this time that we accept uh, this list of personnel. Uh, so moved. Mr. Goodnow, second. Second. Ms. Oliver, any discussion? All those in favor, uh, respond by saying yay. 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 Yeah, all those opposed, nay? Motion carries. That will bring us then to item G4, that the Harris County Board of Education review and approve the attached loan maintenance bid recommendation as proposed. This too was included in your package last week. I trust you had a chance to review that. I will entertain a motion that we accept uh, the bid um, recommendation as presented. I made the recommendation, Shane. Mr. Green, second. 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 By Mr. Ray. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, respond by saying yay. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. That then brings us to item G5, that the Harris County Board of Education review and approve the attached Creekside construction contract as proposed. This too was included in your uh, packet last week. We discussed this on the agenda. Uh, we've discussed this uh, for quite some time, actually. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we will, I'll entertain a motion at this time that we approve uh, the presented construction contract for the Creekside edition. So moved. Mr. Green, second. second. Ms. Oliver, uh, any discussion? 
All those are, all those in favor respond by saying yay. 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 Uh, yeah, those opposed respond by saying nay. Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion this time that we accept all the consent agenda items. That would be H1, H2, H3, and H4 uh, with one motion. So moved. Ms. Second. Uh, Dr. Sparks, thank you. Ms. Oliver with a second. Any discussion on these items? All those in favor respond by saying yay. 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 Uh, Ms. Oliver. I'm sorry. Yay. I thought I said yay. I'm sorry. Okay, you may have. Uh, any opposed? Nay. Any discussion? Uh, motion carries. That then brings us to item I, that the Harris County Board of Education share comments, news, and information they might have with the public and other members of the board. Mr. Green, I'm going to start with you this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I want to say congratulations to all the teachers and students that were recognized this evening. Um, congratulations to each one of you. Um, also want to say congratulations to all of our seniors that are going to be graduating. I know it's going to be unprecedented and not what you had hoped for, but I do wish each one of you the very best. Um, I also want to say thank you to Ms. Baker and congratulations on your recognition for the, I forgot what it was, I forgot the official title. Um, somebody remind me what it was, but congratulations, Ms. Baker. Um, and I think that's all I got, Mr. Chair. Hometown yes. hero. Hometown right. hero, yes, thank you. All right, thank uh, you, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. Um, congratulations, class of 2020. To uh, echo what uh, Mr. Green was saying, the uh, it, it's going to be a little bit different, but uh, we're all going to enjoy the parade tomorrow and the virtual graduation ceremony uh, to follow the next day. Um, I know we're not all able to get together down at the Civic Center like we normally would, but hopefully we'll be able to get down there in July. And those that are able to, to participate will we'll get to walk and, and uh, stand on that stage in front of their parents. I know that's a great honor to get to do that, and I hope we can do that. Uh, but no less of an achievement, uh, even though they're, they're having to do a drive a, a parade and, and a virtual, you, you still should be proud of the achievements that you accomplished. Um, as Miss Bailey said, this is a great group of kids and no doubt they are going to do great things and make the county proud. Um, congratulations to our teachers and students that were recognized uh, earlier in the meeting for their awards and the honors that they've achieved. Uh, great, great achievement there. Uh, looking forward to the uh, the parade tomorrow night, and uh, again echoing what Mr. Green said. Congratulations to Miss Baker and her team for that great honor that they're being bestowed on them. Um, they are doing great things. If you haven't had an opportunity to participate in the loading of the buses or go out to the the feeding sites and and help those great volunteers, uh, I think Monday's our last day of doing it officially that way. But um, if you get a chance, go out there and, and just say thank you, and and uh, they would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Baker, and that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Fantastic, Dr. Sparks. Am I? I just echo everything that's already been said. Congratulations to all of the um, honorees this evening, and especially to our 2020 graduates. I'm very proud of you, and I can't wait to see all the great things that you do. Absolutely. Mr. Goodenough. Um, I'd like to echo everything else that um, everyone said. Give a big shout out to the, the senior class of 2020. Um, I'd also like to give a big shout out to the um, FBLA winners that we had in, in nationals um, that were recognized that um, we had. Um, I want to thank Dr. Um, Finney and his group for the uh, outside Wi-Fi access that we had implemented. Yes. Uh, I'm sure that's going to help a lot of our kids in this area that have do have does have the limited um, internet access with that. As long as they can have the hardware, we'll be good to go. But um, other than that, um, again, um, congratulations, Ms. Baker, for the her Hero Award, 
I do appreciate everything that lunchroom staff has done for keeping our kids fed during this time because I know it's been a, you know, really a lot for them to have and where they weren't going hungry or anything. But um, other than that, that's it. Absolutely. Fantastic. Ms. Oliver. Yes, well, it's so good to see all of you all tonight, and I just wanted to say that it's, um, you know, with Spin graduating last year and, you know, Gwen being a junior, it's so cool to know so many of the seniors this year who are graduating and to know them personally and to know uh, how they have, um, over the past few years, taken their pathway serious and taken their classes serious so that as they're moving on to the next level, they're, they're going to do great things. And it's so cool to know so many of them personally. So I'm looking forward to uh, tomorrow night with the parade and I'm looking forward to the virtual graduation on Saturday morning at 10 and it's just going to be great. But I just have to brag on um, the, the staff at the middle school. They have had an adventurous week where they started on Monday, went through to die um, allowing students to come back into the school to uh, on a on a staggered schedule to get things out of their locker to get their personal things out to turn their uh, textbooks back in and to get their yearbooks and things like that and I um, just sent um, Mr. Decker a message today I said hey how did it go what would you do different what was successful what was this what was that and he he just said it was just wonderful they had well over half of the students come and get stuff their personal items out and it just went great and so good job guys it, um, I know that we went on Monday and got everything and it was just it was just wonderful um, so thank you for implementing that it's been a, a, a an adventure I'm sure but I so so appreciate you taking that on and doing that this week I also spoke with lots of teachers who are doing things I know at park they're getting ready to to have those parents come and 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 pick up things on a on on schedule too. But um, anyway, I just know that I'm so grateful to be in a community where um, they're just, they're not afraid to uh, try new things and keeping the students at the center uh, is really, really cool thing to be a part of. So thanks everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mr. Lee, Ellington. I'm, so I'm sorry. Yes. I you, apologize. I do not I apologize. Shout out to the middle school and Creekside the pickup of personal belongings went so seamlessly that I almost forgot it. Um, so we went on Tuesday to the middle school and we went Wednesday afternoon was our scheduled staggered time for Creekside. And we got everything that they thought they left and um, yearbooks and it was, it went off without a hitch. So I nice. appreciate all of the efforts they put into that planning to keep everyone safe, but to allow them the opportunity to get their stuff. Thank you. Absolutely. A lot of uh, logistical planning went into that. So thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Ellington, we say thank you for, for being with us tonight. And I certainly don't want to put you on the spot, but we also always give our um, attorney an opportunity to make comments if necessary. But uh, welcome and thank you for coming. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be here. You know, um, it, public education, I think, is the most important institution in our society. And you really see it come into sharp focus when society is is struggling and tonight's meeting exhibited on so many different levels, how many ways schools reach out to not just kids, but parents in the community. So it's really a privilege to be with you tonight. Of course, thank you so much. Uh, allow me to say um, uh, congratulations and uh, show appreciation as well to uh, all of those um, students that, and teachers that were represented tonight uh, that we, we were able to speak to. And uh, behind those are, is, I think they said close to 400 or a little more uh, classmates that um, will forever have a unique story to tell when they're sitting around uh, the shop uh, or on the line or uh, in the military barracks and uh, they have to come up with a unique uh, story, they'll, they'll have one. So. Uh, congratulations uh, to all of our graduates this year. And uh, I, I want to say I appreciate as well uh, the high school uh, counselor team, uh, Mr. Dunn, Ms. Patterson, everyone that was involved in taking uh, an unfortunate circumstance that um, no one asked for and creating a memorable experience for our graduates. Uh, so good job to you and thank you 
for all the all the effort and the hard work that you put into that. Uh, Mr. Mr. Kaus, do you have any comments you'd like to make, please? Uh, I would like to add a couple of things. Uh, I do appreciate what the school staffs have done in order to bring teachers back, bring students back. You know, they're kind of they're working really well to uh, kind of wrap up the school year, which is going to end shortly. Uh, next week, Monday, uh, the 18th, we're going to have what we refer to as a soft opening, and all schools will have their um, office staff begin to come in and start working diligently on next year. Uh, we're going to do some things that are that are recommended. Uh, Ms. Carlisle's worked on a protocol that, that helps outline some of the things we expect, social distancing, uh, parents will be encouraged to call and schedule a time if they need to come in and talk with someone. We'll, we're going to work on those kinds of things. Um, and we're going to limit the spread of the COVID-19, but we are going to begin to work uh, uh, very diligently on what we plan to do next year. People have questions. I know on the high school level, they're, they're concerned about their schedules. They're not sure what they're going to do with Move On When Ready, all those kinds of things. So counselors will be available. They'll be talking to them about that. Uh, the principals and administrators, there's some changes coming and we're gonna, we're gonna work on, on fixing those things. Uh, same thing will occur in the central office. We're gonna have more staff here and, and there'll still be some virtual meetings and those kinds of things, but there'll be some uh, uh, people coming in and actually working here too. Because we need to answer questions that people have and, and we're gonna work as a team like we have been doing. But I do think we'll begin to start opening things up, which is, which is something that's occurring throughout the state and it's, it's taking place in our recent district, for example, all the school systems are doing something similar. So you'll be seeing that and you'll hear about it and I wanted to be sure that you were aware of it before it starts up. Thank you. Mr. Leo, can I add something, please? Please. So also, I, I, I failed to mention this and I want to give a recognition to one of our alumni. I'm not sure how many of y'all know Devin Goodman, he was actually recognized as a Skills USA alumni of the decade. And I think it's an honor to have a Harris County grad be recognized for that. That's significant. Fantastic. Thank you for bringing that up. Hey, Did not know that. Great graphic arts. Fantastic. That's awesome. All right. If there are no other comments, then I will entertain a motion that we enter into executive session at this time to discuss or deliberate upon the appointment, employment, compensation, hiring, disciplinary action or dismissal or periodic evaluation or rating of a public officer or employee or to interview applicants for the position of superintendent. Do I have a motion? Make the motion, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Second, Rader. Second, 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 second. Second. Second by Mr. Green. Any discussions? All those in favor respond by saying yay. 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 Scott. Mr. Green? I, I'm sorry. Trying to hit my button. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All those, uh, any opposed, nay? Motion carries. We will be excused to executive session. Thank you. I remember you're going to jump over to that other link. You're going to have to close out of this and jump into Google Meets for executive session. Yes, sir. And then this session will be back up for you to reconvene.
Are y'all coming back in from executive? Yes, I was muted. I, it just goes to mute on its own. It does when you come back out, because especially when we're doing the live stream, I think that's just a normal thing. Just in case there's any background noise. Oh. Dave, can you hear me? I can. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Well, Mr. Mr. Goodno, who else? Is that it? Should be coming in. Uh, no, there's Oliver. What does that mean? I'm sorry. I'm trying to count you all off. Okay. There you are. I think that's everyone. Uh, I will entertain a motion at this time that we re enter um, uh, open session. So moved, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Goodno, second by Mr. Green. Um, any discussion? All those in favor respond by saying yay. 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 Mr. Goodno? Any opposed? Nay? Motion carries. I will entertain a motion at this time that we approve the uh, personnel recommendations presented by Mr. Couch. Uh, I entertain a motion at this time. Mr. Green, second. I second. Dr. Sparks, any discussion? All those in favor respond by saying yay. 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 Any opposed? Nay.